Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know. Please hit the like subscribe button and share with your fellow Denarian friends to help support our channel. Believe me it makes a huge difference and it is appreciated very much. Please take the time and check out our sponsor, the Currency Exchange Planner, voted the number one pre and post RV planning tool for the Denar community. You can use the promo code, the Denarian, and get 25% off along with the mobile application free for my subscribers. I also recommend you registering as an affiliate today with the Carrot Bar Gold Savings Program, the gold program made for the financially challenged as I like to call it. It makes saving gold easy and affordable for everyone. Now is the time to get involved if you have not already done so. Both of the links are in the description below. In today's news, I'm going to cover a couple of more articles of interest out of Iraq and a couple that are relative in my opinion to this investment. You see, we have to look at the world in this investment as it transitions from the old monetary system to a new gold asset-backed world financial system. I do not believe the Federal Reserve will simply go away as something but be reformed into a new Federal Reserve, as you'll see as we move forward today. The world reserve currency is the US dollar and as the world currency it affects every other currency out there. I have stated before in previous videos that Iraq seems to be kicking the can down the street. I think we can all agree to that. The Iraqi government may have some corruption in it, well okay a lot of corruption, however they want this just as bad as we do, and I do not believe they are the holdup. I believe they are waiting for the world, which if you haven't noticed, is moving at a godspeed pace towards a cashless society as a whole. Every country out there, now including ours now admitted to recently, actually the day after the trade deal was signed. Is it just a coincidence? I do not believe so. We all know the central banks around the world have been loading up on gold, it is a fact. Now after today's articles, you will see what President Trump and his administration have planned for the US dollar to counteract the new gold-backed central bank digital currency yuan. Did you really think Trump was going to just let China take over as the new world reserve currency that easy? Mr. Trump is always good at getting people to watch his left hand while his right hand and in today's case the Fed is doing something behind the scenes. Let's get started. First article of interest for today. An economist proposes a solution to end the budget approval dilemma. The economic expert, Abdul Rahman al Masadani, proposed a solution to end the dilemma of approving the federal budget. al Masadani told al Farid News that every year we fall into the problem of approving the budget, knowing that many countries approve their budgets for two years or more to allow projects to be completed. He added, so if the government and parliament approve approving the budget for two or three years, there will no longer be any problem in completing the projects. al Masadani indicated that the caretaker government has no right to send the budget law to the parliament, as it is a draft of the government's program for the coming year and the 2020 budget was organized with a large deficit according to the statements of the parliamentary finance, which amounted to 48 trillion dinars, returning it to a large number that is difficult to cover. al Masadani noted that the political dispute overshadowed the issue of the budget, as the economic aspect has been resolved in the country through the amendment of the recent financial management law which authorized the government to recycle investment allocations for projects that were not dispersed in 2019. He explained, that is, the operating budget is ongoing as it is in 2019 and investment projects will be funded from the retained funds, so I think the reason is more political than economic. The Economist concluded by saying that, the percentage of achievement in the operational budget for 2019 did not reach 10%. So in 2020 things will not be that complicated. Next article of interest. America welcomed the idea. Iraq approached three countries to sign partnership agreements. The financial advisor to the Prime Minister, Maza R. Mohammed Saleh, revealed on Friday that Iraq approached America, Japan and South Korea to sign partnership agreements, noting that Washington welcomed the idea. Saleh said in a statement to the official Iraqi news agency, 
the government has approached the United States, Japan and South Korea to sign partnership agreements, related to infrastructure, direct production and development of the agricultural sector in addition to other sectors. He added, the American side welcomed the idea and promised to study it and respond to it, noting that, Iraq has an agreement on the strategic framework in various fields, but it needs a diplomatic move to activate it. Resigned Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi, on 19 September 2019, arrived in China at the head of a large government delegation on an official visit lasting several days, during which he signed a memorandum of understanding in several areas. According to the Iraqi government, it forms a framework for joint cooperation between the two sides, under which China undertakes various reconstruction projects in exchange for quantities of Iraqi oil. Next article of interest. Exchair launches Digital Dollar Foundation. Former Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFDC, Chair Chris Giancarlo is teaming up with Accenture to explore the creation of a U.S. central bank digital currency, CBDC. Giancarlo, along with former CFDC Chief Innovation Officer Daniel Gorefine and Pure Storage CEO Charles Giancarlo, has set up a not-for-profit called the Digital Dollar Foundation. The digital 21st century is underserved by an analog reserve currency, says Giancarlo. A digital dollar would help future-proof the greenback and allow individuals and global enterprises to make payments in dollars irrespective of space and time. The project aims to encourage research and public discussion about the benefits of a CBDC, explore models for what a digital dollar would look like and help develop a framework for how to create one. To help with this, the foundation has called in Accenture, which had worked on CBDC projects with the Bank of Canada, Monetary Authority of Singapore and Riksbank to act as lead architect and technology innovation partner. Says Jane Carlo, we are launching the digital dollar project to catalyze a digital, tokenized U.S. currency that would coexist with other Federal Reserve liabilities and serve as a settlement medium to meet the demands of the new digital world and a cheaper, faster and more inclusive global financial system. How realistic the goal is is up for debate. Fed Governor Brainerd recently struck a cautious note on the matter, arguing that there are compelling advantages to the current system and that a switch would raise profound legal, policy and operational questions around issues such as privacy. Next article of interest. Trump to nominate an orthodox gold proponent to Federal Reserve. President Donald Trump said Thursday that he intends to nominate two people to serve on the Federal Reserve's Board of Governors, an institution he has repeatedly attacked for not cutting rates deeply enough. Both were first named by Trump on Twitter in July but their nominations hadn't been formally announced. Trump said he has picked Judy Shelton, an economic advisor to his campaign who recently served as the U.S. Executive Director for the European Bank of Reconstruction and Development, and Christopher Waller, the Director of Research at the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. Shelton's long history of unorthodox economic commentary could make her nomination more controversial. Waller who regularly attends the Fed's rate-setting meetings in Washington, is a more conventional selection. Both will require confirmation by the Senate, a process that can take months. Shelton and Waller would fill two vacancies on the Fed's seven-member board. Board members vote on the Fed's interest rate policies and also weigh in on financial regulation. Trump has picked four of the five current members of the board including his elevation of Jerome Powell to the position of chair. That hasn't stopped the president from harshly criticizing the Fed, calling its policymakers boneheads for not cutting rates quickly enough last year. The Fed reduced its benchmark short-term interest rate three times in 2019 to a range of 1.5% to 1.75%, a very low level historically. Trump argues that the Fed should set rates even lower at zero or even in negative territory, as central banks in Europe and Japan have done. Economists generally regard rates that low as evidence of an economy in trouble. Shelton has a history of attacking the Fed's policies and has urged that the United States return to the gold standard, 
under which the value of currencies like the dollar are fixed to a specific amount of gold. Most mainstream economists who study monetary policy reject the gold standard as antiquated. Shelton criticized the Fed during Barack Obama's presidency for keeping its benchmark rate pinned at zero for seven years, which she argued risked higher inflation and a sharp devaluation of the dollar, neither of which occurred. But like some of Trump's previous Fed nominees, she now echoes Trump's calls for lower interest rates. Waller is also likely to support keeping interest rates low. He works for the president of the S.T. Lewis Fed, James Bullard, who was one of the strongest supporters of rate cuts last year. Waller has been instrumental in helping shape Bullard's view about the U.S. shifting into a low growth, low inflation and interest rate regime. Kathy Bostiancic, an economist at Oxford Economics, said when Trump first floated Waller's name in July. Next article of interest. The prospect of building a new international monetary system is getting real. This is part of a series of op-eds previewing the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Coindesk will be on the ground in Davos from January. 20th to 24th chronicling all things crypto at the annual gathering of the world's economic and political elite. Follow along by subscribing to our pop-up newsletter, Coindesk Confidential, Davos. Jeremy Allaire is co-founder, chairman and CEO of Circle, which, with Coinbase, pioneered the Open Standards Center Consortium in USD Coin, USDC a dollar back stable coin used in millions of financial transactions around the world. He has also been named to the International Monetary Fund, IMF, high-level advisory group on fintech. The opinions here are his own. When world leaders gather in Davos next week, they'll confront an essential question. Can they seize the opportunity generated by years of innovative blockchain development to reshape the global economic order in a way that creates wealth and value for people around the world? From the fall of Lehman Brothers to the ensuing Great Recession, the international monetary system has thrown everything but the kitchen sink at trying to build an economic system that works for everyone, but those efforts have fallen short. It's time to try something new. Fortunately, from the ashes of the Great Recession arose the first fruits of a solution, a new kind of secure digital money with no centralized authority, built on an innovative new technology, blockchains. This breakthrough was first described in the Bitcoin white paper, published without fanfare just six weeks after the collapse of Lehman. Since then, computer scientists, cryptographers, Technology entrepreneurs and a deeply inspired global community has committed itself to building a more open and inclusive financial system. These blockchain projects are still in their early days but are gaining momentum with increasing velocity and force as large nation states, big tech companies and the broader crypto community begin to deliver technologies for digital money that will reshape the international monetary system in exciting and unpredictable ways. Just look at Ethereum and many of its competitors. They're creating an economic operating system for the Internet, designed to provide an open and immutable system of record-keeping, transaction processing and computation. And, like the Internet, no corporation or government has complete control over these public blockchains, a critical element at a time of high mistrust in public and private institutions. Public blockchains mean it's now possible to represent important records and assets in a digital form and to codify, literally, the rules for their exchange and use through smart contracts. This cuts out intermediaries, reduces costs and offers near-perfect auditability. Public blockchains made it possible to create global stable coins, entirely digital representations of either fiat pegged or fiat back central bank money that can be used and exchanged over the open internet similar to how we can easily exchange digital content. Stable coins are so transformative they've enticed the world's largest technology companies, Facebook, for example, and some of the most powerful countries, China, for example, to prioritize blockchain and crypto technologies. Stable coins have also significantly expanded the range of use cases for public blockchains, which have been limited by the volatility of cryptocurrencies. What Davos should know about stable coins? 
stable coins have rapidly emerged as one of the most important foundational components of blockchain-based financial infrastructure. Unlike proposed central bank digital currencies, CBDC, most stable coins are designed to operate on public or semi-public blockchains, inheriting many of the most powerful attributes of cryptocurrencies, open, global, interoperable use over the internet, and the ability to integrate and use such currencies within smart contracts. They also inherit some of the risks of cryptocurrencies and cash. These include financial crime and money laundering risk and consumer protection risk through irrevocable loss of funds. However, through sound regulation, public-private partnerships and thoughtful operation of stable coin networks, these risks can be managed. The first generation of stable coins were issued and tightly controlled by individual private companies. A proliferation of private and competitive stable coins seems unlikely to lead to the kinds of standards and governance that can allow this innovation to flourish and become widely accepted around the world. We believe the right model for stable coins is a multi-stakeholder model without a single point of control or failure. Stable coins offer a tremendous opportunity for businesses and policy leaders. Neither camp alone can reshape the global economic order for good. The public and private sector must come together acknowledge changes necessary and set global standards that enable innovation at the same time they protect consumers and the soundness of the overall financial system. The Center Consortium, which Circle co-founded with Coinbase, is one successful example of this new model. Center has set out to build a broad consortium of stakeholders from both the public and private sectors. Center stable coins are designed to be multi-issuer, multi-currency and multi-chain. The first center stable coin, US dollar coin, USDC, is now the fastest growing stable coin and the second largest stable coin in the market. At Davos, I'll be catalyzing a discussion about stable coins in general and how central banks, regulators and the private sector can work together to create standards for stable coins backed by central bank reserve deposits and ensure that stable coins benefit the public and comply with new, well-designed regulatory regimes. This approach balances the need for open technical development and innovation, driven by the private sector, while also ensuring that such global stable coin systems protect and benefit the public by meeting a reasonable standard for compliance. Global stable coins and public blockchains point us towards a new architecture for the global economy built for the digital age, creating a financial system that is more inclusive, efficient, innovative, safe, secure and that helps create wealth and value for all who participate. Can we seize the opportunity? Please hit the like and subscribe to be alerted as more articles of interest unfold. Be sure to visit the Denarian blog and find me on Facebook. Please take a moment and visit our sponsor, the Currency Exchange Planner. Use the promo code, the Denarian, to get 25% off at checkout along with the mobile application added on at no extra charge. Also, get registered as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program today. If you do not keep your savings in an real asset like gold, you may lose everything as the fiat system fails. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold. I know what you're thinking, gold is too expensive right? This program is made so low-income people can afford to buy gold in small increments, which makes it affordable to everyone. Get involved today, and secure your family's savings tomorrow. You can always transfer gold into any kind of fiat money you want or need, the gold will always be in your possession. Above all the gold will retain its purchasing power in good times as well as bad, the dollar will not. Ask yourself this, why are all the central banks loading up on gold lately and running from the current fiat US dollar? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected today, before it's too late. Both of the links are available in the description box below this video. Knowledge is power, over and out for now, the Denarian.